Aloha and welcome. My name is Taylor Norris and I'm a certified galactic astrology soul reader and quantum soul guidance practitioner as well as a Reiki master teacher. In today's video we will be diving into the upcoming Cancer Full Moon on December 26, 2023. And one of the central themes, the centering themes that's coming through is galactic graces granted. Before we dive into the astrological and galactic energies, I would like to invite you to my upcoming Capricorn New Moon Distant Reiki Share on January 11th to learn more and RSVP for free. Visit my website, taylornorrisreiki.com. Everybody is welcome. You don't have to have any Reiki training or experience to attend. It's a beautiful gathering of soul family, blessing in the new moon and the lunar cycle ahead. And this will be the first new moon of 2024. So I hope to see you there. This is the astrological chart for the upcoming Cancer full moon held in the void, galactic healing, magic, and calm unity. These are some of the frequencies and the energies that are transmitting through the astrology and the galactic energies of this beautiful, intuitive, watery Cancer full moon. Cancer is a cardinal water sign. It's emotional, it's mystical, it's magical, it's motherly, it's nurturing, nourishing, protective, home. What does home mean to you? What does family mean to you? These are all important reflections that will be occurring and coming into the light of awareness at the time of this full moon finding balance in your home life and in your inner life and in your more public life, your work life, your career, your responsibilities. These would be the energies of Capricorn. What does work-life balance look like to you? What does balance of your family and yourself look like to you? What does family mean to you? What does home mean to you? All of these questions are very good to be reflecting on. How are you mothering and nurturing yourself? How are you fathering and nurturing yourself in a more masculine way and in a more feminine way? Because we both have we all have inner masculine and inner feminine. We have an inner mother, inner father, an inner child. We can create a healthy inner family within ourselves. And I think this is part of the task of this particular full moon. The full moon is in square to Neptune. So letting go of any ways we are out of balance or not feeling healthy in our home, our relationships, our family, our work and career situations. There will be a, a sensation and a process of letting go of any of these lower vibrational ways of being in the home and family life, as well as in the more public and work, career life, your public reputation, your responsibilities. There can also be a sense of letting go of the ways of the patriarchy and the masculine way of being that is no longer serving your highest good. You're forcing yourself to do certain things. This can be a embrace of a softer, gentler, more grace-filled path at this moment in time and we're really supported here by Jupiter and Taurus in trying to the sun and sextile these are harmonious flows of energy from Jupiter to both the sun and the moon so embracing more of the graces and the graces from the earth and the graces from the heavens as well because this Full moon also features a lot of strong Uranian energy. Uranus retrograde is opposite Venus. 
and that opposition will have been exact a few days prior to the full moon. So this can result in financial turbulence, turbulence in your relationships, in your emotions as Venus is in Scorpio, things coming up, things coming to a head, things coming into the light of awareness. This can be massive awakening, sudden disruptive events within money, monetary systems, relationships, and your sense of values as well being reworked into this higher frequency manifestation of what truly matters to you. And the invitation is to embody more of that, live in greater alignment of your authentic values, not the values that have been passed down to you from the patriarchy, but your your authentic value system. And even with this Mercury retrograde in Sagittarius, rethinking your authentic value system, rethinking the way you do things, rethinking your belief systems as well, rewriting the stories of your belief systems and your thought forms and introducing in the higher frequency belief systems and thought forms that serve your greatest good and feel aligned for you and energize you with this Mercury retrograde in conjunction to Mars and Sagittarius. So these will feel good. These will light you up. These will make you feel expansive and motivated and happy and more uplifted so be flowing into that and mercury can help you integrate more of the healthy masculine expression of your energies and belief system so it's not just completely throw out the patriarchy but retain the healthy masculine and cultivate the healthy masculine and the divine feminine is supporting you in doing just that. Mercury and Mars are in trine, these supportive flows of energy with Chiron and the North Node. This is the direction of your soul growth to be experiencing and allowing for a reprogramming to be taking place in your personal energy and in your mental body as well. The Uranian energy is also highlighted because we have many of these wonderful biquintile aspects. We have Mercury and Mars in biquintile to Uranus. We have a couple other quintiles in the charts here. We, we can see that the sun is quintile the south node and the moon is quintile the north node. Quintiles and biquintiles are fifth harmonic aspects. These are magical, creative, talent-oriented gifts and talents. When we see them in the natal chart, these are really wonderful evolutionary flows of energy. So the full moon in interaction, in quintile relationship with the nodal axis suggests we are being very supported in our soul growth at this time in terms of working through whatever challenges, whatever letting go we are engaging in, in regard to our home and our family life and these types of themes and whatever is coming up for you as you find more balance and wholeness. Uranus in biquintile to both Mars and Mercury, this is beautiful. This is galactic contact. This is really vibing with your community and allowing those belief systems and ways of being to shatter and fall away from you and reorienting your energy to your new healed timeline that is so much lighter, brighter, freer, and feels in complete resonance and alignment with the reality you wish to create, not only in your own life, but the reality frame you wish to empower in the collective as well. There's a lot of earth energy, and this is wonderfully supportive as the sun and the solar energies have been so active lately that it will be very soothing to connect with the earth, to be grounding, to be connecting in nature and allowing yourself to have some time away from stimulation, just really feel held 
by the earth as well. And with all of this completion energy occurring at the time of the full moon, it is a strong cardinal energy as well. So you may be having new ideas and inspirations of projects you wish to initiate projects that are stemming from the deepest, truest parts of you and your intuition and inner knowing. So allow those ideas to be percolating and write them down, consider them. Might not be time yet to act upon them. This with Mercury retrograde especially might be a time to complete certain things you've already set in motion. And at the end of the Mercury retrograde, you might feel more compelled to be initiating what you've come up with. Mercury will be direct on January 1st, 2024, right after Jupiter turns direct on December 31st of 2023. So as we change over into 2024, we have most of the planets will be direct by then and there will be that sense of forward motion to propel you into what you wish to create moving forward. So this is a really gentle grace filled end of the year and if any letting go is coming up for you know that it's part of the process and it's in the service of creating space for the new that this is very healthy and wonderful. I'm also seeing this grand sextile here with the sun, Saturn, and Jupiter making this smaller triangle here, the two sextiles and the trines, two 60 degree aspects and 120 degree aspect, all harmonious flows of energy. And this is, you know, that, that sense of constriction and focus Saturn structure working together with Jupiter, a sense of expansion in the sign of Taurus on Earth in very grounded and practical ways with this practical minded Sun and Capricorn that this could be a spiritual construction, a spiritual building, a spiritual creation that has real substance and form that is manifesting at the time of the full moon and really taking on greater shape as we close out the year and certainly will take greater shape as we enter 2024 over the next few months. So very, very exciting energies ahead. The Sabian symbol for the full moon is Cancer 5 at a railroad crossing. An automobile is wrecked by a train. And the main theme for this is a karmic readjustment. You can pause the video and read the interpretation if you'd like by astrologer Dane Rudger from mindfire.ca. That's a wonderful website, a wonderful rabbit hole to go down as every single degree of the zodiac covered. And really with this symbol, I'm seeing it as we have the ability to be very distracted by all the accidents and what's going on in the world and kind of the mainstream consensus reality timeline that's being touted and presented as the only timeline, but is in reality only one timeline and one reality. So in what ways are you still giving energy to that timeline? And how can you redirect and adjust your energy so that all of your energy and all of your life force energy, if you want this, <laughs> is connecting with and empowering your healed timeline, your highest evolved timeline, your most beautiful and brightest timeline. Don't be distracted by the wrecks and, and the things that might be presented to you. Keep your single pointed focus on that which you wish to create and know that your growth and your healing does not have to occur through trauma and catastrophe, that it can happen equally well through grace and softness and peace and beauty and love. Go with your intuition here. You'll know what this karmic readjustment is for you 
and follow through. See where it goes. Even if you're having fears come up, follow through, follow your intuition first and foremost. The Sabian symbol for the sun is five degrees of Capricorn, Indians on the warpath, while some men row a well-filled canoe, others in it perform a war dance. And the theme is aggressiveness. So once again, I see that we have this choice. You can focus on the well-filled canoe, your comrades, your soul family that's loaded up in the boat and all the goodies you might have in the canoe. I was imagining, you know, fruits and vegetables, some supplies, a good drinking water and all your, your soul family members. You could focus on that and the beauty of your surroundings, or you could focus on the war dance and the war cry and those aggressive energies. And it's up to you here. I'm also reminded of how many of us in this lifetime are transitioning from the light warrior type of spiritual practice and orientation, a more masculine orientation into this way of a more divine, feminine, light bearer, light bringer, bring the light and that's how we heal and that's how we uplift rather than the light fighting the dark as in the way of more of a light warrior, spiritual warrior. And that this is a a new learning for us as we move into the age of Aquarius, how do we come together in community and be at peace and allow ourselves to ascend and evolve beyond war and competition and aggressiveness into peace and harmony, collaboration, community, unity, consciousness, and working together. So you can work with this energy internally And see where you're being aggressive with yourself and introduce the frequency of peace and love and whatever you would like to have in that space. In the sky, the sun is in the stars of Sagittarius. It's in the head of the archer Sagittarius who is a more warlike manifestation, the constellation Sagittarius, as opposed to the zodiac sign Sagittarius, which is adventurous and the explorer and interested in higher mind subjects and wisdom and freedom. The archer has its roots and more of a warrior energy that as its Mesopotamian myth also included a healing component that was stripped away in the later Greek versions of the myth of Sagittarius. So once again, we might have the spotlight shown on ways we might still be holding on to that warrior energy, be offered a chance to make some adjustments. And the stars in the archer's head are really very focused and prophetic in nature. So this can be very strong, intuitive downloads, seeing down various timelines. I've happened, I've had this happen to me at many different points in my life, even much earlier in my awakening. The ability to just see down a timeline, if I continue on a certain path, do I like it or not? And even if it takes me on a massive redirect to get off that timeline and cancel it, I look back and I see that when I did, that was very good. (laughs) So you might practice something like this in your lifetime of seeing down different timelines and deciding which one you might want to take so you can focus your energy there. The moon is in the constellation of Gemini. These are the twins. This constellation is about duality and storytelling and writing and communication. It's in the foot of Castor, one of the twins. And Castor is the more positively oriented twin. And in the foot of Castor, I really do believe this moon is asking us to 
walk our talk and live our truth and live our most optimistic view of reality in ourselves and let go of the rest. This is the galactic chart of this full moon. It comes from galacticastrochart.com where you can make a chart like this for your own birthday and see your galactic soul connections. I have two different forms of the chart here. Up here, we include more of the aspects. Down here, I'm just including the conjunct and opposite. As it's a full moon, I wanted to see what are more of the aspects for this sun and the moon because there were no conjunct and opposite alignments. And what we see is many different harmonious flows of energy coming from Sirma Star in Virgo constellation, Royal Star Fomalhaut in Piscis Austrinus constellation, Deneb Adij Star in Cygnus constellation, as well as the Shapley Attractor. There's also a square to the super galactic center. So these first three alignments, these are very supportive and positive. Age of Virgo, golden age, guidance, divine feminine guidance and support, connecting us with the feminine mysteries, connecting us with the earth and the land and the knowledge that we need at this time. Through Royal Star Fomalhaut, we get this beautiful Christ consciousness energy flowing through, and it's really asking us and inviting us to be a divine messenger for divine guidance, inner guidance. We can really access this at this time. Be a great time to do some automatic writing at the time of this full moon. Do a reading for yourself with cards if you like cards. Any other way you are feeling like connecting with your own authentic guidance, do that. This can be simply sitting quietly in nature and seeing what comes to you and through you or being more aware of just your day to day when those intuitive hits pop in. Archangel Gabriel is there to support you and bring to you the knowledge as well as the rest that you may need at this time. For me, the star feels very restful and rejuvenating. It's a very pure, beautiful energy. Cygnus constellation is the swan. It's one of the birds in the heavens. And Deneb Adij star is the tail of the swan, which is in charge of navigation of the swan. Where's the swan gonna go? Dinabadish is the shaman star. So we are wonderfully supported here at the time of this full moon to engage in shamanic work, shamanic practice of any kind, shamanic journey, ritual, ceremony, Reiki journey, however you feel called to connect. You can receive some higher guidance about what it means to create this new earth. How can you contribute to heaven on earth? Galactically, Dinabadish is said to be one of the places where beings went as an experiment to create heaven on earth. And they learned quite a lot in that process of the pitfalls of creating some kind of utopian society. How not to do that? It's so I would be very open to suggestions from this particular star system and these star beings about what we might do to avoid those pitfalls and really be successful as we co-create heaven on earth now. The galactic energies are streaming through the sun and the moon specifically with the Shapley Attractor in the super galactic center, but they're also streaming through Mercury conjunct the galactic center and Jupiter opposite Shapley Attractor. And all of these are super massive black holes or cosmic anomalies that we've yet to fully comprehend the scale and the magnitude of their majestic power. The galactic center being the center of the Milky Way galaxy. So Mercury, our lower mind, connecting to the center of the Milky Way galaxy. This can be very mentally centering. The galactic 
points also to me the black hole energy has been coming through in my sessions and readings with others in my work is very strong right now. So definitely be open to this. The black holes are very supportive for healing work, for releasing, for letting go, for conditioning, programming, trauma, ancestral healing, heaviness, burdens, belief systems, you name it, can really help in that releasing, dissolving, cord cutting, cord dissolving, cord healing, you know, getting rid of the connectors, the agreements, soul agreements, soul contracts, oaths, vows, curses, spells, all of these things that no longer serve your highest good. These cosmic super points, as they're called in the galactic astrology community, are very helpful for this kind of work. So I've been seeing them come in. Maybe some of you have been experiencing them in your meditations. Let me know in the comments if you've been connecting with the black holes. They're very highlighted in this full moon chart. So not only are we connecting with the center of the Milky Way galaxy through our mind where we can receive multi-galactic information as well, downloads, guidance, galactic contact, past life memories, future life memories, all sense of linear time can go out the window and you can become more multidimensionally aware. We also have the super galactic center and square to the full moon. So this is the center around which a super massive black hole around which the Milky Way galaxy and some 30 other galaxy are in orbit. And the black holes are organizing principles. So it allows all of those stars and star systems and galaxies somewhere to be. It's like the galactic community organizer of that black hole, the super galactic center, which is really having to do with the ancestral healing. And as it's a full moon in Cancer, that family and home theme, the blood lineage theme, can really be coming in strongly at this time and know you're very supportive. Whatever actions you are guided to take at this time, go with it, flow with it, and know you're supported. And if you need more support, by all means, reach out and receive additional support. Self-care, self-care, self-care. It can be very difficult when you are choosing the healed timeline in your most highly evolved timeline and those you love and those you've known your whole life are not necessarily on that timeline as well. So be gentle with yourself in that process and understand that you are being guided for your highest good at this time receive the community support that you need your your soul family and wherever you are guided to receive that support in whatever format go with it then we also have the shapley attractor very much a part of the full moon so shapley is sextile and trine the sun and the moon these are supportive flowing aspects and Jupiter is opposite Shapley attractor. So if we go out one more step beyond the super galactic center, we get to the great attractor, which organizes and is the source of a vast cosmic neighborhood called Laniakea, a super cluster of which the Milky Way is a part. And we go a step even farther out, we get Shapley is the organizer and the source of a vast, vast region of the universe. And to have Jupiter there <laughs> opposite is expanding that multi-galactic intelligence, that support we're receiving for letting go and clearing out and releasing. And this can be a lot of protection in that process as well as Jupiter offers us a sense of project protection. And we see again, Saturn here, conjunct FOMO, how Archangel Gabriel, there is protection to access. Mars conjunct Razzle Haig, the healer Asclepius in the Greek myth, Nofucius constellation, 
We have so much protection in this process. So even if fear is your companion as you're engaging in this way and maybe confronting your deepest fears and you're uncertain about, well, if I do this, which I know I need to do, then what's going to happen? How am I going to survive if I take my energy away from this thing that's been steady or helpful for a long time? Just know you're very much helped and protected as you always have been. So you could even be looking back and seeing all the ways that you've been protected in your life and being grateful for those moments as well. So this is where I'm really seeing the galactic graces coming through is with all of these galactic points so highlighted, the Eridanus energy, the river of life energy is highlighted, the unicorn energy of Pegasus is with us, Alpharat star and Andromeda all about freedom. So we have so much freedom and liberation energy as well as this Algol star and Perseus constellation, which can be very literally uh, cord cutting as Perseus was the young warrior holding Medusa's head that he had cut off. And Medusa, of course, was able to turn anything to stone as her punishment for sleeping with Neptune and getting caught in Athena's temple. And Athena was very upset. So she punished the woman, Medusa, not Neptune. He got away clear. And Medusa was pretty outraged about how that went down. So Perseus was ordered to slay her and use her head her turning to stone ability to then kill Cetus, the sea monster. So much of the collective unconscious in these stories that the Greeks told that they were so afraid of. And so Algol star having to do with the female Kundalini energy. So any kind of rage feelings and passion feelings that might be coming up too, to be, be very gentle with yourself and understand that you can let go of those two with this Lilith opposite Atranar star and Eridanus, the river of life. You can let go of the rage feelings and the anger in the starry river of life as well. And this is an energy that is very much activated in the Reiki journeys that I share in the River of Life. So we are very much supported at this time. Venus conjunct Beta Centauri, Hadar Star, and Centaurus giving us ideas, empowering our new earth, heaven on earth value systems. And we continue to receive beautiful soul growth guidance from speak a star and Virgo constellation having to do with the divine feminine knowledge, new knowledge that will advance us and help us create greater balance as we move forward and evolve as individuals and a collective and the Arcturian energy too of Boots constellation supporting us as we pioneer and we lead a new path, we are able to walk forward into uncharted territory, even if we're afraid. We do it anyway, because it's what we're here to do. And the Arcturian group consciousness beings of the light are very helpful and supportive and offer us healing energy, the balanced frequencies of Reiki energy and other modalities that are very, very balanced energy to support us on our way, even though the Arcturians have far gone the dimensions of the Milky Way galaxy. They are incredibly highly evolved beings. So you are supportive, whatever you're letting go of. Yours can be a path of grace. This can be a graceful full moon. Doesn't have to be painful and traumatic. Invite it to be filled with the galactic graces, granting you your liberation, your freedom, your healing, your empowerment at this time and beyond. The final message I'd like to share is the Galactic Heritage card that I pulled for this full moon. And this comes from Lisa Royal Holt's deck. And it's number 80, Embracing Family. 
zeta reticuli present. And so this really has to do with the Cancer full moon, that inner mother, that inner nurture, the inner father. How can you have a healthy constellation of family within yourself first? Tending yourself. This is around the time of the holidays as well. So embracing family in whatever form they may take, whether it's your blood family, your friends, your fur family, your plants, your crystals, your online family, any way. And knowing that this family frequency can be experienced within if holidays are a hard time for you. Know that you're never alone. You're surrounded by your guides. You're surrounded by beings of the light and invite them to give you a greater experience of that beautiful healing embrace. I'm also feeling Archangel Raphael really coming through in this too. The green color frequency, healing family of origin issues and helping you feel really embraced by the earth at this time. These can be other family lineage issues beyond this lifetime as well. Thank you so much for being here. If you'd like to connect with me more, learn about my offerings, taylornorrisreiki.com. I appreciate you sharing my videos. I see that you're doing it for reaching out. I am so impressed by the caliber of the souls I get to connect with. Y'all are so amazing and intuitive and gifted. And I feel so blessed to be in sacred circle and presence with you at this time and in the future, in the past, in the parallel, all time, all space, all dimension. So many blessings to you for a beautiful Cancer full moon. Aho, amen, namaste, and so it is. Mahalo.